I had a little bit of time to uh, to prepare this, 17 minutes to be exact. And uh, <laughs> I think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. But uh, I'm, yeah, I'm kidding. But uh, I just wanted. I just began to think about it, and I just wanted to come up with a thought of uh, seek and find. So if I had to title this for you, it'd be seek and find. We're just going to start in Matthew 6:25, and uh, we're just going to read. Uh, through 33, and we're just going to break down the simple scripture of seek and find. So, um, if you turn there with me, if you didn't bring your Bible, you have it on your phone. If you didn't bring your phone, then you could just listen. Um, I just want to read this to you, and then we'll, we'll get going. So, Matthew 6, 25. <clears throat> and most of you are familiar with the scripture, but I just want to read it to you just to, just to set up uh, the backdrop says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why? Do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall I eat or what shall I drink? That's the third time it said that. Or what shall I wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So I just want to begin to just talk about seek and find that the first part of the scripture, the first part of um, uh, this word is from 25 to 32, basically talks about all the things that we worry about, all the things that we care about, all the things that, we're, that, that are, is consuming our time, whether it's providing for your family, whether it's, it talks about clothing and eating. We're not so desperate for food all the time, at least not most of us, but we work to provide a better living here in America. We pr work to provide a bigger house, and we worry about all these things, right? These guys were killing their own food back in the day, and they were just worried about food and what they were going to wear. We worry about much more than that in these days. We worry about what kind of car I drive, what kind of rims do I have on my car. Could I, you know, get a raise so I could pay for the rims? Or typically the way we do it is we get the rims and hope for the raise. Right? In America, we buy them on credit and then worry about the money that we just spent that we shouldn't have spent. But whatever, we worry about stuff. We worry about things. And most of the scripture is talking about uh, the worry or the concern of people. And the Bible says this, uh, Jesus says this, and all these words are in red, which is a good indication that Jesus is speaking. Right, so there you guys know that Jesus is speaking here. And he says, after all these things in 32, he says that the Gentiles seek. 33 says this, but seek first the kingdom. And I just want to talk to you about seeking first the kingdom. By seeking first the kingdom, we stay focused on not my plan, but his plan. Okay? If I was to stay focused on my plan, I believe this scripture is really saying if I stay focused on myself, I'm going to worry about all the things that the Gentiles began to worry about. Right? I'm not, I don't want to concern myself with all of that stuff. Now, do I need to look at my bills? Absolutely. Do I need to know where my money is going? Absolutely. Do I need to, to try harder to be better at whatever it is that I'm doing? Absolutely. But there's a difference between tr trying harder and worrying about whatever it is. Right? I'm going to try harder to be a better husband. Doesn't mean it's going to keep me up all night worrying about being a better husband. Does that make sense? I'm going to try harder about being a better employer, but it's not going to keep me up all night trying to be a better employer. I understand that I have some, I have some things I have to do. So, so when I see God first, it's not I stay focused on His plan 
and not my own. Okay? If I seek God first, means I will find Him because I'm seeking Him. Okay? Just stay with me. Stay with me for a minute. I've just got a couple points, and then we're just going to go into discussion. So be ready to be ready to talk about this. If I seek Him first, means I find Him because I'm seeking Him. If I seek Him first, I will see fewer distractions because I'm seeking Him. My eyes are fixed on Him, therefore I don't have so much worry or so much distraction to focus on. By seeking Him first means that I am second or I'm number two. Right? So if I seek Him first and His kingdom first, I become number two. No longer am I number one. Right? Difference between salvation Never between a Christian and a non-Christian is what? God is first. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the difference, right? Between me and, and a non-Christian is I put Christ first. I learn to die to myself and put God first. I become second. Let me just give you some scripture on seeking God. De Deuteronomy 4.29 says, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul. <clears throat> which basically means with my thoughts, with my will, my desires, and with my actions. Right? If I seek Him with all that I am. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this. I know you know what 11 says, but I want you to know what 29, 13 says. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with your whole heart. So basically, God is saying that if you search for me, you're going to find me. And this is what, this is what the word seek means means, and this is just in the Webster's, um, it's a verb, which means it's an action. I only went to the 10th grade, so just bear with me. Um, I remember it was an action, right? I was taught it was a verb, it's an action word, right? Which means I can't sit on my hands and be active, right? It means something I physically have to do, whether it's something that's turning within me, whether it's my mind thinking about seeking God, or if it's my actions doing or seeking what God has called me to do. So first of all, it's a verb, which means an action word. It means to resort to. It means to go for. It means to go in search of. It means to look for, to try to discover, to ask for, to try to acquire or gain, or to aim at. So if we are just to take one of those and go in search of something, I don't know if you guys ever, um, we used to play ditch them as kids. And ditching was cool because it was like tag but with teams. And there was about 18 of us living in the same house. We were all cousins. And, uh, you know, Mexicans, we just rolled <laughs> deep, man, deep. So it was fun, man. Great childhood. Some of my cousins were 18. I was like seven, right? So you fought. We fought every day. But we played this game called ditching, and we'd get in, in teams. Sometimes it would be five on five. Sometimes it would be six on six, but it was tag. It was almost a, a mix between capture the flag and tag, kind of. You, didn't, you had a base, and if you got majority of your people safe, then you're able to hide again, right? So if I was it, then I would go and seek or search for the people that were hiding, right? And the, the, the harder I searched, or the more I searched, the better my opportunity was to find it. Right? Simple game of tag, simple game of ditch them is what we call it. And, and it's the very same thing in, in Christianity dealing with God. The, the more I seek, the more I'm going to find Him. With, with the more effort I give, then the more I'm going to find Him. And I know there's a fine line in Christianity where it talks about, I don't, there's nothing required of me, but yet I have to seek Him. Right? Bible talks about grace and mercy all day, and you believe that, and so do I. Right? But there's a the point in my life where if the Bible says, if Jesus is saying, if you seek me, you're going to find me, and if seek is an action word, then there's got to be a point in Christianity to where grace meets a little bit of action, and we begin to see God, and, and seek Him, and if we fall and, and continue to go after Him, grace is sufficient enough that we can continue to go forward and not have to go backwards, right? Is that good enough de definition or explanation? Because I don't want you to think that it's, it's an all, you know, I have to do everything type of mentality either. 
But I'm saying with, with my whole heart, the Bible say that I need to seek Him. Bible, so another portion of Scripture says that if I meditate on His Word day and night, if I'm doing something, if I'm thinking about His Word, if I'm, if I'm living His Word, if I'm, if I'm speaking His Word, it, it requires something of me is my point, is that if I seek Him, I will find Him. And conversely, the opposite, whatever you seek, you will find. And let me show you this, Proverbs 11.27 says this, it says, He who earnestly seeks good, uh, good things finds favor, but trouble will come to who seeks evil. So conversely works the same way. So if you seek death, you're going to find it. I remember when I was a dolphin, when 2, 3 in the morning, yeah, I would find it. You know what I mean? I would call people I didn't know. I would call a friend of a friend of a friend just to pick up and get high because I sought after it, because I wanted it, right? I don't know if you guys have done drugs or whatever your vice was, but whatever you seek is what I'm saying is you're going to find. You're going to find it. If you, if you seek evil, then you're going to find it and your life is going to reflect it. But if you seek the things of God, you're going to find him and your life is going to be, begin to reflect him. Right, so whatever I seek, I'm going to find. Let me give you another scripture that just talks about the complete opposite of seeking Christ. It basically says, Psalms 119, 155, Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek his statutes. Salvation is far from the wicked because why? Because they don't see God's face. So conversely, the opposite, right? So if I seek Christ, I'm going to find him. If I seek evil things, then I'm going to find him. So in conclusion, this is, it, it, I'm telling you, just a simple word, man, very to the point, very direct. My, my question to you is this. <clears throat> what you seek, you will find. <clears throat> so my question is this to you. What do you seek? This is the question. Right? What do I seek? What's my desire? What do I spend my time doing? Right? Because whatever I spend my time doing, that's what I'm going to reap. Or that's the kind of life I'm going to have. Sometimes we question the stuff that's happening in our life. And sometimes it's a direct result of what we've done. Or what we've, what we've focused on. Or what we've, what we've become is based on who we've been. Kind of thing. Does that make sense? Right? And I think a lot of times, especially in America, we want to push that off on somebody else. And say, no man, that's somebody else's fault. That's somebody else's problem. I'm a child of the Most High God. I get it. You are. But God says, if you seek me, you're going to find me. And if God is a complete God, he says, if you'll be whole lacking nothing. Right? And if God is a complete God, as I seek him and find him, is he working things out in me? Absolutely. Is he going to change me from the inside out? Absolutely. Is it a process? Absolutely. But the process is faster when I'm seeking his face, right? Like promotion and work is faster when you're doing everything the boss asks you to do without complaining or disputing as the Bible says, right? You want to delay your promotion? <clears throat> yeah, just don't do what the boss says. You delay your promotion like that. And kind of the same thing here. God is saying, if you seek me, you're going to find me. And this word is for me as well because... Listen, we could all get into, into the, the thought process or the mindset that my life or the, the results of where I'm at is based on somebody else or somebody else's fault, and we begin to cast all this stuff on people, right? And we live life with excuses. Why this didn't happen, why that didn't happen, and we make all the excuses why we are where we are. And the fact of the matter is God does want good things for us. The Bible says that he will prosper us. Not that, he's, not that he might, not possibly. It says he will. He will. Now, the fact of the matter is, am I going to run towards him? Am I going to seek him based on that? Or am I going to run into all my stuff and all my issues? Therefore, my issues get this, become massive. Because I just showed you in Scripture that if I seek the wrong things, I'm going to find them. So my life is a direct result of who I seek or what I seek. Right? It's not Joe's the neighbor. 
right? It's not anybody else's deal, it's my deal. Have people done me wrong? Sure. Have done me wrong? Sure. But I've made a lot of bad choices in life. And if I had to pay for every bad choice, are you kidding me? I'd be in jail or dead right now. <clears throat> really? So God is good. Amen. Right? His grace is sufficient. Because you're still here. And I'm not, I'm not, listen, I'm not saying that God is going to punish you for all the stuff you did. That's all, that's all done and over with, man. I'm talking about from here forward. That what you seek, you'll find. You want to be prosperous? Seek God, God will make you prosperous. Right? You want to be integrous? Seek God, God will make you integrous. Right? You want to be a great husband? Seek God, God will make you a great husband. Right? You want to be rich? Bible talks about Bible talks about um, the uh, the blessing to become wealthy or the power to get wealth. Right? In Deuteronomy, that I have power to get wealth. And I believe that. Cuz I don't want to be broke. I can't help people if I'm broke. Can't buy people houses if I'm broke. Can't buy them cars if I'm broke. Right? Can't put people to, through college if I'm broke. Right? So I believe that scripture. So I run after God when it comes to that scripture. So what I seek, I'm going to find. So my question is to us, what are we seeking here? What do you see? Just a simple question, man. You don't have to talk about it out loud. You can. You don't have to. I'm not prying. I'm just asking you a question. I'm, I, I want, because what I what I like about Tuesday night is we come here and we can be honest with one another, right? Because not all the time do I see, you know, the kingdom. Yeah. Honestly, I watch probably about an hour of sports a day. I'm not seeking the kingdom. You know what I mean? I probably watch an hour of TV a night, right? Criminal Minds, that has nothing to do with Christ. Absolutely nothing. That's everything to do with the other side of that. You know what I'm saying? So, obviously, there's times where I'm not just continually seeking Christ. And I'm not saying 24-7 that I seek Him. But majority of my thoughts, majority of what I do, majority of what I say, is it Christ-like? Right? And that's really the question, man. Because when the, when the rubber meets the road, man, I don't go home with you. I don't live with you, nor do I want to. Um, yeah, I'm just being honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't hear you when you're in your car cussing out the dude that just cut you off. You know, I'm not there. I'm not there, but he is. He is. We can all come in here and fake each other out, man. And I'm doing all that I'm supposed to do, but you got to know. Yeah. Right. And there, listen, there's grace to cover us. But I can't use that as my excuse to continue to be stupid. I can't use that as my excuse to continue to do all the things. Well, I just checked her out for a little bit, John. You know, you know, after that, you know, I really don't, uh, I really don't lust very often, but I did. You know what I mean? Or I really don't look at whatever very often, but I did. Listen, it's all good. There's grace for that. But if every time you do it, you say the same thing over and over and over again, I think it's time to change what you seek, man. Mm -hmm. Right? Because God doesn't necessarily want us to be broken down. Doesn't want us to think at the level that we thought at five years ago. Right? God wants us to raise our level of thinking. The Bible says that I re need to renew my mind daily, change the way I think often. And, and, and just to line up with the Word... Because he talks about the Gentiles seeking all these things, all this <coughs> stuff. And he gave you one simple commandment. says, just seek me first. Seek me first is all he said. Then the rest of scripture says, and all these other things that the Gentiles seek will be added unto you. I'm telling you, if we just took one scripture and just believed it, you can't even have your problems be done. Really? Financially, you won't have a problem? Why? Because he says all these things that these guys see, I already have lined up for you, man. They're already yours. These guys seek me first. Right? Because if I don't seek it, I'm not ever going to find this thing. Not ever going to find it. And today I had to force myself to get in my word, man. 
I took two, three hours off of work this morning from like nine to noon. And you're like, yeah, see, see, I don't have that kind of liberty. <clears throat> well, that's not my fault. You know what I mean? But you can make time somewhere, right? I don't have the liberty to work eight hour days either. You know what I mean? I work 12s and 15s, but I don't have that kind of liberty. So I don't know what I do with the eight hour day. But I, I, I forced myself to get in the word and really see God on this because I didn't want it to be a word that just came from me. I always want it to be a word that God delivers fresh to us. Something that we're going through as men. Something that God could begin to deal with, not only you, but with me. And I know if I have to force myself to get in my word, how many of us have to force ourselves to get in this word? Right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, bite our tongue when we really want to tell somebody the truth. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right? All in the name of the truth. <laughs> Listen, don't be stupid when it comes to the truth, okay? Some things you shouldn't say, whether it's the truth or not, especially to your spouse, okay? If you think you're going to be stupid honest, you're just being stupid. <laughs> really, really. There's some things that you don't need to tell her, whether you think they're the truth or not. There's some things you don't need to tell your kids whether you think it's the truth or not. There's some things you don't need to tell your friends whether you think it's the truth or not. Just putting down people and letting them have it just for self-gratification is not cool, man. Yeah. Just so you feel better because you dumped all over somebody? That has nothing to do with seeking God first. It has everything to do with putting yourself first. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just wanted this to be a word that God really breathed into. So... I forced myself to get into the Word because I haven't been here for the last two weeks. And Eric, uh, he's ready at the drop of a hat, man. Yeah. I say, hey, Eric, you're teaching in 10 minutes. He's like, I'm good. Ready. Yeah. <laughs> at the ready, man. At the ready. So always, always. And the Bible talks about that. Be ready in and out of season. Right? Anytime. Be ready to step up. Right? And he's ready. Why? Because it seeks God first, daily, more than likely. Right? Otherwise, you don't know Scripture if you don't seek His face. Mm -hmm. First. And you figure out what time of day it is, and people say the morning works the best, whatever. If you're a night person, maybe night works better for you. You know what I mean? But seek his face. What does that mean? To seek his face. I don't know. Let me give you some examples. Because I'm a practical guy. So. <clears throat> seeking his face is me specifically setting some time aside. I don't have to write on the calendar, I don't have to schedule it weeks out, right? It could just be every day. I just set some time aside. Does it have to be when I wake up? Does it have to be? It could be. Could it be in the middle of my day? It could be. Could it be on the drive to work? It could be wherever you're at. I'm just saying practically you got to do something. Right? we got to begin to seek Him somehow. And how do we seek Him? So we set some time out of the day for Him. And then what do we do? We open His Word because the Bible says that His Word is alive and powerful, sharper into its sword, never returns to a void. So whatever you say is powerful and it won't return to a void. How awesome is that? Right? So I begin to read his word, and I begin to get encouraged. Why? Because it's his word and not my word. So instead of cussing the, you know, my co-worker out, I just begin to speak the word of God <coughs> over his life, and boom, I speak life into this guy, even though I felt like cussing him out. Right? Yeah. So, um, so I set some time aside, I read the word, and then, I, and then I pray. And what I'm teaching my kids right now is that we pray the word. So whatever you just read, right? So I'm reading... Um, Isaiah 61 and I've been reading it for the last week and so I read this scripture and I'm just giving you some point it's not the way you have to do it. I'm just giving you a little point and you read the scripture and then you begin to pray that scripture out loud right so if the Bible says that I'm gonna I'm gonna preach and I'm gonna teach and he has anointed me to 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 do that he's anointed me to heal the sick and he's anointed me to uh, to set the captives free how do I apply that to my life I begin to pray it out loud like Lord I'm glad that you anointed me to preach your word. I'm glad you anointed me to set the captives free, right? And just giving you a small little example of what we do as a family. This is what I'm teaching my kids to do. And I got 16-year-old, 13-year-old, 10-year-old, 9-year-old. So we haven't been doing this forever, right? Otherwise, they probably already know it. But so then I just begin to pray, and I pray the word. And then another good thing to do is worship and praise, right? So I praise and I worship. And to me, worship is more than just a song. It's more than me just raising my hands. To me, worship is a daily thing. Yeah. It's what I say, it's what I think, and it's what I do. It's worship. To me, that's what I believe it is. I believe 
Worship is an act. So you can say, well, I worshiped this weekend, man. I was there on a Sunday and I was jamming. I was getting down, man. God was moving. Yeah, but were you worshiping on Monday when life began to happen, right? Were you worshiping on Tuesday? Were you worshiping on Wednesday? So just some ideas or just some practical ways for you to see God is those simple four or five things. And however that looks to you, however many minutes a day. Some guys pray for an hour. I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> like an hour straight, uh, you're awesome. That's all I'm saying. Right? If I make it more than 15 minutes, man, that's a long time for me. Right? But I just pray as often as possible, right? I got a lot of windshield time in my work, so I drive probably two hours a day, so it's a good time to call and either fellowship with somebody or a good time to pray, right, if I'm not on the phone. So um, just whatever, whatever you feel that, you know, that time is for you. But I want to encourage you that seeking God is setting time out of your day to begin to put Him first. And I guarantee you this. I don't care how many, how many years you've been serving Christ because there's nothing to do with you with years has nothing to do with the number of years you've been serving or maturity has nothing to do with how many years you've been coming to church. It has nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. You've been coming to church for 50 years and a guy been coming to church for two years could be more mature than you. Yeah. Right? Because maturity is realizing that, you know, honor, respect, realizing you're obedient is maturity. Right? Um, so, for, for all of us, for everybody, that you just begin to set some time a sign to seek God and to really find an answer to whatever you're going through. Because the Bible says that He cares about everything. Even the little things. You might think it's small. He cares about that too. You might think it's big. He cares about that too. Right? So find time just to sit down, decompress, and say, God, I love you. Right? I don't know what your guys' prayer life looks like, but I don't ask for a whole lot of things, man. I thank God for a whole lot of things. Because he's good to me, man. Yeah. He's good to me. I should have been dead a long time ago. I made it past 17. He's good to me. But I got family that loves me. He's good to me. Regardless of whether they listen. Man. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, he's good to me. So with that, I'm, I'm done.